How did the serpent look before sin? There is no biblical account given outside the fact that evidently uh, some commentaries like the Schofield Bible will say that the serpent had the ability of flight. Uh, not flight, but that evidently he was walking. Uh, that's what they will say. But according to other accounts and according to uh, different hieroglyphic writings and archaeological findings, the serpent evidently had at one time wings and that he had the ability to fly. And this is why so many ancient uh, hieroglyphics show, uh, so many ancient archaeological findings show serpents with wings. And evidently he had the ability to fly and could wrangle his way through the air. That probably was a beautiful thing, beautiful sight to see a beautiful a serpent with wings flying and wrangling his way through the air like this. And can you imagine how beautiful it was? A beautiful varnished gold serpent. But at the same time, the Bible shows that in Genesis chapter 3, the Lord said, Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days. Listen to this very carefully. Dealing with it um, in Genesis chapter 3, when God curses the serpent. Listen to what he says here. All right? And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shall thou go, and thus shall thou eat all the days of thy life. How did the serpent look before sin? I would say that from the scripture, from, the, from, it, from what we see in archaeology, uh, evidently we're going to, I'm going to go with the, I, we're going to look at this issue and say that uh, the serpent evidently had to have wings and before sin entered. Uh, the Bible shows he was a wise creature. All right. All right. So, but at the same time, the serpent did not have the ability to talk as you and I talk. This was used as a medium for Satan to bring down, to, to charm Eve and to get her to doubt the word of God on the plain teachings. In the day you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. This is where the issue of immortality of the soul comes in, where people begin to believe that you die and you live on, there's life and that you can die and live on. This lie was told in Eden and this lie is still being told today.